Hey guys, how's it going? It's Joe here from JD Blueprint. In this video we're going to be converting my cold, unusable basement into an ensuite bedroom. The aim of this video is to encourage you to take on your own home improvement project. So let's get started. The first thing I did was plan each stage of the project from start to finish. This gave me a clear idea of what jobs I had to tackle. Next I needed to find out what permits and inspections I needed. I had some plans drawn up, sent them off to building regulations. Once they were approved I was ready to go. The first job was to fit a window. This was to let in some natural light and it allowed some easy access from the street. The first big job was digging down to gain some height. Here I've marked out the floor for where I'll be digging. To avoid the expensive and difficult job of underpinning, the plan was to start digging 45cm away from the exterior walls. This was an equal length to what I was going to dig down. The digging was probably the longest and toughest job. For this we used a jackhammer and shovels. All the tools I'd recommend are in the video's description. For your project I'd recommend staying positive and work as time will allow you to. Try not to put too much pressure on yourself to complete a task. Just enjoy the process. Focusing on the finished job will definitely help. The next job was to remove the rubble. Most people would hire an expensive rubble conveyor belt and skips, but I was on a tight budget. I figured out that people need hardcore rubble for all kinds of reasons, so I bagged up the rubble and I advertised it for free online. It definitely wasn't the easy way or the quick way, but I saved a lot of money. Local people were happy to help remove the rubble for free for their projects, and it also stopped the rubble from going into landfill. The next stage was tanking the walls with a waterproof membrane. Because the earth surrounding basement walls are often saturated with water, this moisture can make its way through the brickwork causing damp. Tanking the walls will prevent damp problems by forming a waterproof barrier. Some basements might even need a sump pump, but my walls were dry so I wasn't bothered about that. Tanking my basement wasn't too hard. If you do your research, follow the guidance and seal up any tears that you might make, you can't go wrong. I've left you linked in the description to where I bought my tanking kit. If you want to know in more detail about this job or any other home improvement job, I've left you a link to my website in the description. The website has tons of free content designed to help those looking to improve their DIY skills. The next stage was insulating the floor. This was nice and easy. You just work out the square foot of the room, order what you need, cut them to size and fit them like a jigsaw puzzle. The next stage was pouring the concrete floor. I did get quotes from companies to pour and level the floor themselves, but these quotes were thousands of pounds. Being on a tight budget, I ended up making a long levelling stick to level the floor out myself. Then I mixed the right ratio of concrete with a drill and large buckets. This took a day of really hard graft, and in hindsight I should have at least hired a cement mixer. In the end, I got the result I wanted. It's important to remember to wear safety clothes when doing this yourself. I 
I bought this dehumidifier which helped the floor dry quicker. When it comes to tougher jobs like these, if you treat it like a workout, focus on the end result and remember the money you'll save, it makes the work a whole lot easier. Next, to make sure the floor was smooth to work with, before the concrete floor was fully set, we primed it and added a thick layer of self-leveling floor screed. Next was building the stud wall and insulating the walls. As you can see I'd used a special watertight fixing plugs for the waterproof membrane so I could drill my stud work straight into those. I couldn't frame the stud wall because of awkward angles, but I made sure the stud work was tight and all connected with noggins. At this point I arranged with my plumber and electricians where to feed all my wires and pipes. Plasterboarding was the next stage. It's best to start with plasterboard in the ceiling first. I took the wall and ceiling measurements first and marked where the plasterboard needed to be cut. I made sure the plasterboard fitted snugly and used plasterboard screws into every stud. Scrim tape should be used wherever two pieces of plasterboard have been joined for a smooth finish. Next was the plastering. Definitely harder than it looks, but quite fun when you get the hang of it best advice I can give is to mix a nice smooth texture without any bits in it. Make sure to spread evenly to give the best finish. Prepare the walls properly and try to keep your equipment as clean as possible to avoid spreading dirt and bumps into the walls. The next stage was fitting the bathroom. For this I had a friend do all the plumbing and we directed all the waste pipes from the toilet, the shower and the sink to a Saniflow pump. When installing a bathroom into a basement you need the Saniflow to pump up all the waste to ground level. Tiling the bathroom wasn't an easy job but I was lucky to have some help to get me started. Finally I had a decent shell to decorate and carpet. With a tight budget to start with, I discovered that a lot of research, help from friends, hard work and motivation can go a long way. If you need any help with your home improvement project, or you would like to improve your DIY skills, please get in touch. I would love to work with you and assist you along the way. Hopefully I've inspired you to take on your own home improvement project. If you found this video of any value, please check out my website for more free content. The link is in the description.
Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.